the kids I work with feel like they've got nothing. And I've really struggled with therapies that will fix that. The Nurtured Heart approach for me is a way of giving tools to not only myself, but parents, teachers, um, youth workers, anybody that's at that cold face with these kids to help them really see what's great about them and really start to look to life with a bit more hope um, and a bit more purpose. This work evolved out of my work as a family therapist working with some of the most difficult kids and it's moved into how to help kids build inner wealth and by doing that helping them to flourish. The approach has evolved from being used primarily with parents to now being used in larger scale ways in education in thousands of classrooms around the world in many different kinds of therapeutic applications in group homes in uh, foster care with kids who've run into situations with drugs and alcohol by people in the court system by child advocates I've tried all kinds of different models for approaching kids and, and helping them to improve um, and I have not run across anything that feels more intuitive, more natural, more um, accessible for kids. Children respond because they know you see them. They know when, when you hit that spot, when you say what it is that they're doing, and they have evidence that, that, that you're right because they're doing it, when you hit that spot, you know it and they know it. Everybody in the room can feel it. People may forget what you say. They may even forget what you do. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So I try to remember that when I walk through the halls and I, I do share that with, with my colleagues. We should endeavor to make people feel good. This approach has taught me to be positive, to love. And that is all Nurtured Heart approach is all about. To see the greatness in every moment because even in this moment there, is, there are great things happening. I am the approach. I don't have to learn something again. I don't have to remember. I don't go into my head because I'm trying to think of what did it say on page 327? Because when you're coming from your heart, when you are the approach of Nurture Heart Approach, there's no mistakes. It's all recalculating and remaining present with the people that you're with. This approach has uh, changed my life in surprising ways that I hadn't expected having um, created it for the sake of challenging kids and their families. It was a surprise to find myself using it on myself, to be using it in my family, to be using it um, as best as I can as I march out into the world, into real life situations. It's been remarkable to see how it's inspired my life. When we do the approach to ourselves, and we start to recognize ourselves and that their actions aren't about us and that our job and our mantra is it matters how we show up, that's when shift happens. That's when we stop looking for the negative, we stop looking for the disease, we stop looking for the label, we stop looking for the deficit and we start, our eyes change, the lens of our eyes change and then it's, it's unstoppable. I do enjoy the process of doing this stuff with everybody because it feeds me. I know it feeds them, but it feeds me too because it's just that reciprocal kind of thing that you get it. The energy comes bouncing right back to you. So when I do this stuff with people, I experience myself being right there together with them. You know, and boom, back it comes, you see. The Nurtured Heart Approach is so powerful because it gets at the core of their uh, opinion of themselves and no one has ever said you're awesome because of their negative behaviors challenging behaviors really intense behaviors they've elicited negative attention from all of the people that have worked with them and then the traditional psychological approaches oftentimes miss the boat by uh, piling onto the trauma by uh, all of the overemphasis on their acting out and their negative behavior without ever really noticing and bringing out and blooming uh, in their own minds, 
uh, that there's a, a level of, of uh, awesomeness to them that no one has ever taken the time uh, to, to share with them. I have shared a little bit about the population of students that we serve. Somewhere around 94%, 96% free and reduced lunch, um, some poverty situations. And their self-esteem a lot of times is very low. They're used to hearing the negative. And to literally see the students come alive where they believe in themselves. So the moment that you start on the positive, it's almost like they do a double take, like what? You're, you're saying something positive about me. Turkey's my next. Um, Jeremiah, that's when you may come out of reset. Turkey's. You need some help? Jameer, can you help him out? Turkey's gobble. Turkey's gobble. Jeremiah, thank you for receiving that help from Jameer. And Jameer, thank you for helping your classmate out. That shows a good partnership going on right there. Good teamwork. Christina. A dog can run. A dog can run. Let's get another thing about a dog. Um, your day. Dog. Give me something about a dog. A dog barks a lot. A dog barks. And you know what, Jorday? I don't know if you paid attention, but right here we have that a turkey gobbles and a dog does what? Barks. So you just show me the difference between these two. You compared and contrast right there. Good job, Jorday. All right. You know, children and young people quickly work out what adults are there for in their lives. If adults are there in their lives just to tell them what to do, yeah? tell them no, to judge them, to tell them where they're going around, to point out all the bad points, nothing will change. But the approach changes that. The approach looks as, I'm going to recognise your qualities. I'm going to tell you what those qualities are. I'm not going to make you feel awkward. I'm not going to put you in a corner. But it's me. I get to tell you what I see. What I see in you is these qualities. We are able to recognise with them how great they are in this moment because that's who they are too. And they don't need to be that other person that is misbehaving. They can continue to be all the pieces um, that are great and that are excellent and that are kind and warm if we remind them of that. Each person wants to be recognized, energized about the greatnesses and goodnesses they have. And when you start doing that, it's like a magnetic effect. And that's what is happening in my life at this time. You talk to people, energize them about their greatness, and you see it growing. Not at all giving energy to anything negative. Our vision has always been, children need to know how special they are. They need to know how great they are. They need to know that they are a gift to the world. It doesn't matter where they come from, what color, where in the world they are. They're, they are a gift to the world, and they're great and special. And if and if we can really convey that to them, I mean, if we can pour into them and help them internalize that fact, that's the antidote for poverty. And Nurtured Heart is a vehicle, a tool, an approach that helps us do that methodically, consistently, and effectively. I've been through kind of a therapeutic life since I was around eight. Um, I was kind of the little monster child and hard to handle a lot. And as I got older, um, it didn't get better. And I ended up getting myself into self-harm, which is a really scary experience. Then, you know, continuing with this strong attitude I had against everything, um, the only thing that everyone thought to do was just punish me. It took, you know, att attempted suicide for things to really get, I mean, it just threw us off the cliff. When we started doing the Nurtured Heart, it completely changed everything. And when you look at it, at the first time, you're like, oh, you know, that's not gonna work for my family. Like, my family's out of control, that's too simple of a program, and it's not. I started noticing a difference, like, within the first week with my family, which meant a lot to me. So now being able to have so much trust into my family and, you know, really knowing that I am not gonna be put down, you know, if I'm on the top of the stairs 
not going to be thrown down if, a mis if I make a mistake. There's always a reset. The approach is being used with kids who have the diagnosis of ADHD, oppositional defiance disorder, uh, attachment disorders, kids who are on a spectrum of autism, kids who, who have cognitive disabilities, kids who are um, mild in their difficulties and kids who are severe in their difficulties, where kids have just gone offline whether diagnosed or not to who they really are and it helps bring them back to the beauty of living their life in a great way. The Nurtured Heart Approach challenges all the traditional thinking in terms of systems of foster care, systems of treatment, psychological models and recipes. Just seeing the impact it makes on the families and the kids that I serve in really heartfelt, meaningful ways. Not that any of that other stuff didn't work some or didn't work a lot. This just works better. Uh, when I first started social work, I was passionate. I was inspired. I was going to change the world. And all of a sudden, I found myself in a position that was really more managing budgets, managing families, and managing risk. Uh, and I'd lost that kind of inspiration to improve the quality of children and families' life. And the approach was able to instill that back into me. And I've not looked back ever since. We get into this work because we love kids. And I think there are, everyone's looking for new tools, new strategies, new help, new, new ideas, something, because it's feeling helpless and feeling stuck, which makes us feel hopeless, which is what burnt us out. Um, I don't go in there promising them that the Nurtured Heart Approach will fix everything. But what I tell them is that I can give them an overall framework which will fit beautifully with the kids. It's not going to hurt the kids. And in fact, it, it rarely contradicts with a lot of the things that we do. And coming at it from that angle, I think especially those that are quite ingrained with certain other techniques, don't feel like I'm trying to challenge them. And one of the first things I say to them is, I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong. All I'm saying is, hey, this may fill a gap. I found that the other approaches that I had were 40 to maybe 60% effective. Once I brought Nurtured Heart into it, it quickly jumped to at least 85 and now that I've become experienced with it and with helping families uh, get good at Nurtured Heart, that I don't know exactly what the number would be, but it would certainly be in the 90% area. What I noticed in particular about kids on the autism spectrum or with strong social cognitive challenges is that they have a huge history of feeling unsuccessful um, to some level and, and oftentimes to a huge level. So they come in with anxiety and depression secondary to knowing that they're doing it wrong but not knowing how to do it right. So Nurtured Heart really provides that vehicle to really change how they feel about themselves in every little moment. It's breathed back into my practice uh, faith that things change, people change. They don't change, they transform. They become the guides of their own life. They trust in themselves again. They fall in love with their children again. The, the biggest thing for me really was the amazing difference this approach made with my son, who I, my husband and I had given up hope on. I mean, being able to help, that we were really gonna have to go to an outside source, some sort of psychology, counseling, something. He's about to get kicked out of school. He's been having problems all along. and thinking, I'm not the mom for this kid. I don't know what to do. So the Nurtured Heart approach turned all of that around, gave, told me I am the right mom for this kid. Actually, it's even better than I ever thought it was going to be. I'm, I can be a better mom than I ever thought I could be because of this. And so I want to use this to help other parents who've kind of gotten to that place of there's no hope, I don't know what to do, and I don't have any answers, and I'm scared to death that I can parent my child because they can. Once we knew how to have beautiful, intentional relationships, and once our eyes were turned on what was right about them, instead of focusing on all the diagnoses, all the things that were wrong, all the things that the predictions would be like, oh, this is gloom and doom. Once we knew how to go, no, we're just gonna stay in this moment right here. And in this moment, we see greatness. In this moment, we see what's right. In this moment, you are magnificent. And we knew how to do that. It changed our hearts. And then we could parent them.
as the parents become more and more comfortable with the approach, it just kind of becomes how they parent. It becomes who they are with their children and they also start to notice that their children start to use the approach with each other and with them as parents. It becomes a place where everyone can bloom, where parents can feel successful about being a parent. Our son is so out of control that we're, we're literally calling the police several times a week to come to our home. The Missouri City Police had recommended using the belt, we tried it. it, it still doesn't work. In fact, it just makes us feel horrible and, and, and I end up hating myself through it. Using a belt is it's just soul crushing for me. Where the nurture heart method, it's, it's soul building, it, it's, it's healing. That's always been there. Um, her confidence and you know knowing to make the right decisions but we just didn't help it grow we were we were basically stomping that out constantly looking at the negative things you know I wish we had started it years ago you know but it's it's nice to see our daughter happy and to have the confidence that you know we always knew you know she had and it was there but really this just brings it out I mean, I think I'm always going to be, like, struggling with depression, but I know how to deal with it better now and get over it. And it might last for, like, an hour or two now, or it would last two months. Okay, here's my truth. Caleb came to us when he was 12 years old. I got used to him calling me Sarah. He called me Sarah for ever and you know what, honestly, it was okay because I didn't need to replace anybody in his, in his world. And then, you know, we talk about adoption and we think we're adopting the whole child, you may be so lucky to get adoption of the heart. And so my son who turned 16 in January, at Christmas his gift to me was he started to call me mom. And I don't mean like mom just occasionally, he calls me mom all the time. And you know, you get used to having the other kids call you mom because they do it all the time. But one of the sweetest sounds that there is, is when a child you understand what your heart has done. And you get to have that moment that you go, ah, he gets it. He gets that this is love. And, and out of that pours him mom. Just looking in my classroom and I see that little sorrow, sorrowful face, you know, walk into the classroom, probably something went bad that morning. And as soon as they walk into the classroom, I hijack them with something positive and encouraging and, and immediately you will see the transformation on their face like, wow, I just walked into a safe place. I can leave what mommy or daddy just said to me right there outside the door. And that's a beautiful feeling to see them embody their greatness and feel good about themselves. The students know who they are, they recognize their own greatness, and they recognize it in others. The, the whole model is embraced and internalized by the students as well. It's not just the teachers that are doing it, but because they are doing it so regularly, the children understand and are able to be a nurturer themselves. We longed for support. We were at the end of options for a student who we loved but were so frustrated. And the support came in the form of somebody who had Nurture Heart training. And we thought he was crazy. We thought, how could he come into a classroom and praise students who are already doing what we expected them to do, for heaven's sakes? We wanted something corrective. That was week one. I would say somewhere between week two and three, we had the epiphany that miracles were being performed in that classroom. It was life changing. Um, we suddenly started seeing the possibilities in every child and the possibilities in ourselves to see things differently. Um, with the population that I serve with special education students, those students who may be cognitively delayed, you're able to recognize anything about them. They're showing up for school, they're sitting in their seats, they're able to use a utensil to eat food, um, things like that, um, up to students who are using doing calculus and recognizing them for their ability to focus and, and work hard. 
You know what I noticed, Steve, is that you're not hitting that window hard. And that shows really great self-control, because I, I, I know you're a little upset. I love how you're calming yourself. And I really love the way you're taking care of yourself right now, Steve. Do you know that? Do you know you're taking good care of yourself? It doesn't matter if they come from a high income or a low income uh, neighborhood or family, there's still the same challenges. And at the same time, those students that come from a high income, uh, they still need the positivity. They still need the support. The student that's, that doesn't have any uh, 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 behavioral issue still needs this positivity and still needs that love. Uh, year before last, that would be two school years ago, we had 45 students that were ineligible to return because their pattern of disruptive behavior did not improve over the course of the year. Last year, this last current year, we had 15 candidates who were in that category, but when we really sat and looked at all of those children, there were only five that really were problematic and were unable to return. So that's a big drop for us from 45 to actually five. In, a, in that year's time. It's, 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 I've learned this, the language of the heart right now, because what I felt was as a teacher, as a mother, I was operating too much from this mind that I'm gonna get everything right, you know, that I, I teach curriculum, 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 just taking less care of the social and the emotional needs of the children. And now here I'm talking from here. I'm, I'm, I'm connecting with my students. I'm building relationship with them. And this is where I think the accomplishment's gonna come from. This is not only about kids. My husband and I said, you know, he said, We've, this is the first time we were ever on the same page with each other. You know, before we were using it on the kids, we were using it on each other. And you know, for 15 years, you know, we, we've tried commun different communications, different, it was all of this finally felt like, okay, we're in sync with each other now. I'm a bit of a fish out of water because I'm a personal coach. I don't work with kids. Um, but for me to see the parallels of uh, greatness practices, resetting, um, switching that, that paradigm of negative thinking to positive thinking. The nurtured heart approach literally saved my life. I was on the verge of taking my life, so I got help. And little did I know, my feeling at that point was, I'll do it to appease her, but it was gonna be another counselor, same old garbage that I'd been hearing for years. And little did I know that when I walked into her office, that I would hear words like greatness and fearlessness and courageousness and brave and it literally drew something out of me that had always been there and I didn't know it. The tools that the approach provides just provide so much support for, okay, what do I do when she's upset? Or what do I do when I'm upset? It's, it's just, okay. Um, and your clarity and your boundaries to trust when I can handle it is, doesn't feel like abandonment, it feels empowering. And so it just kinda, Really good for adult child, like parent adult child relationships. Yeah, there's not oh an age gosh. limit on it. No. I also use it as a as a management approach, and I've I've worked with other organizations in uh, how to work with even difficult employees using the nurtured heart approach. And so I've worked with uh, line supervisors and executives on on how to work with employees and using the nurtured heart approach as a approach as a management model, which works really really well, and again makes it a lot more organic to. Um, uh, to use with the kids also. The amazing thing is how well it's received wherever we go. Mm. I've been in India just a few months ago. From there I went to Dubai. A few months before that I was in the new Ukraine. We were being translated. We were translating the Nurtured Heart Approach and people got it. And I keep saying, if the whole world can just get it, if the world can just get it, if the world can just get it, I can say that over and over, it would be such a much more beautiful world, a wonderful place to live if we remember to see the greatness in others. I like that it makes your individual life better, your relationships better, it makes you happier, it makes you um, 
uh, feel like you're contributing to the world in a, in a, in a better way and uh, it's synonymous with making the world a better place. People are looking for answers and we're, we're working onto the platform of, of world peace. We take it one heart at a time. When we create children and other adults with nurtured hearts, we are transforming the world literally. It's what we need for change in the world. And so for me, it really ties into what I deeply believe about the needs of humanity and how I can connect to that and make a difference. So what I can absolutely guarantee is exquisite moments of recognizing who you are and the gift that you are and the joy of playing with the gift you are. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen.